Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Corey Ray Sterringer and today I have for you yet another paranormal story time. But this one's going to be different from the ones that I posted recently. So this one is going to consist of three different parts. It's going to have some history, it's going to have some dreams, and it's going to have some things that have happened while awake. And some things that correlate with the dreams that I've found out. So... As you can see from the title, this one is about the apartment that I live in, and I'm currently setting in while I film this. I'm going to turn you guys around this a little bit. Here we go. And the question is, is this apartment haunted? We've had some experiences here just within the last week that's making me further question this. And I don't know. I'll leave it up to you all to see what you think after I tell my story here. But, like I said, it's a little different. Not everything's in the journal yet. The stuff we've had recently is not in the journal yet. But, here we go. So, I'm going to start off first with one of the first dreams I've had while I wasn't living here yet. I was just spending the night. So, I dreamt that I was walking down, like, this office hallway with all these different doors. And they had, like, big windows, like the front window here next to me, like this great big window, but it was in front of the office door, beside the office doors. And I'm walking down this hallway with this girl that I went to high school with, and we get to what represents Kelsey's apartment, and there was all these lights and everything hanging in the window. And the girl with me says, oh, I really like Melanie's apartment windows. And I said, no, that's not Melanie's apartment, that's Kelsey's apartment. Melanie's my cousin who used to actually have an apartment a couple doors down from us. Before we moved in. But, um... So she's like, oh, okay. So I go into the door that would go into Kelsey's. And she went into the door across the hall, directly across the hall from it. And when I walk in, instead of finding myself in the living room where I'm currently sitting, I found myself upstairs in Kelsey's bedroom. And when I open the door, there's this overweight guy on the ground, well, on the floor... And he's like growling and kind of like twitching around and stuff like that. And I instantly know this guy's either possessed or he's a demon or something. And he like looks over at me. His eyes are rolled back in his head. And he starts like crawling up the wall and then onto the ceiling and just like sits there like a spider or something. And I'm like looking up at him. And about that time, Isabella, our step, my soon to be stepdaughter, I'm getting married to my fiance this coming Saturday. But anyway. She comes running into the room, and I'm like, no, don't go in there, Isabella, don't go in there. And about that time, the guy on the ceiling's head spins completely around like the exorcist or something, and he just gets <laughs> like that, and his eyes roll back in his head and everything, and I woke up from it. It really creeped me out, you know, obviously. But relating to this dream, I found out... From Kelsey, well, when I woke up, I kind of wondered because she had told me about it before. But I didn't think about it until after I had that dream. And she didn't give me a description of the guy or anything. So the guy in the dream, like I said, was overweight. He was wearing, like, a hoodie and sweatpants. And pretty much probably about 30s for age. And I remember Kelsey telling me there was a guy across the street from us in one of the apartments across the street from us that had overdosed and passed away in the apartment. And that's what I got to thinking as soon as I woke up that it was him. So I asked Kelsey, I said, what did that guy look like? And she said, oh, he was like a bigger heavy set guy. So I get to thinking maybe that was him, you know, because a lot of people say when under the influence of drugs and things, it's almost like being in a possession or something. And the fact that in the dream, the girl that was with me, which I don't understand why she was with me, went into the apartment straight across the street from us and the guy's apartment is straight or the girl in the dream went into the door straight across from ours and in real life the guy's apartment is straight across from ours so i don't know if that represents anything or not but yeah so that was a creepy one in itself and then the next one that i had was a waking experience and a dream experience all in one so i woke up in the dream, I was still dreaming, but it felt like I woke up, 
and look beside me, and there's this woman standing next to the bed, like with her arms crossed like this. And I'm like, who are you? Why are you here? And she just like looks over her shoulder at me, and then I wake up, kind of panicking, because I'm thinking, oh, this woman was just standing next to my bed. Well, then I lay back down, realizing it was a dream, as I'm laying there, I'm like half asleep, and I keep hearing like something, it sounds like something coming up the stairs, and then I hear like a bunch of whispers all at one time. And then I hear Corey right in my ear. So I like jump up out of the bed, get ready, and leave for work like an hour early because it freaked me out so much. But um, that one, I haven't found anything really that corresponds with that dream, but yeah, it freaked me out. So, the next one, it actually happened twice, and the first time, again, I dreamt that I woke up and was in the bedroom, and Kelsey and Isabella had come home from school and work, and I'm like, oh, you're home already, so I get up and I start to make the bed, and as I'm talking to them, I go to throw the blanket up to put it on the bed, and as it goes up, it's Kelsey and Isabella standing there, and when it comes back down, it's these two little girls wearing pink dresses, and their hairs and braids like Wednesday Adams is on my shirt here. And they have their backs to me. And I'm like, who are you? And they both turn around and look at me. And the oldest one, who was I knew was older because she was a little bit taller than the other, but they look just alike, says to me, this is our house. And I wake up, freaked out, obviously. And then there was another time with the same two sisters that I was asleep, and Kelsey actually came up and was waking me up in real life. And just as I was getting ready to wake up, I just had these, this flash vision of those two sisters again. But this time, they were standing there holding hands like the first time. But they were facing me, and their hair was all wet and draped over their face like the girl from The Ring or something. They didn't say anything or anything, and just like a flash vision real quick of them. But and that was the end of them. I don't know where that would have come from. The girls, they look like some Asian descent. I don't know exactly what, but I don't know. It was just, it was really creepy. Creepy children, like I said before in the last video. And speaking of creepy children, that's going to lead into this last part of the video, which corresponds with things that have been happening here recently in the apartment. So, when I first moved in with Kelsey, which has been a few months ago, the first or second night I was here, I was coming out of the bathroom. I'd just gotten a shower, and I was drying my hair like this and had my head down. Well, as I come out of the bathroom, up at the top of our stairs, it's like our bathroom. Mine and Kelsey's door is on this side for our bedroom. Kelsey's on the, or Isabella's door is on this side. And I come out of the bathroom, I'm drying my hair, and I see these two little girl legs that had like tights on like Isabella always wears run into her bedroom. So obviously I think it's hers, so I go into our bedroom. And shut the door, and when I come out, Isabella's not in her room. And I come downstairs, and she's down here with Kelsey. And I'm like, was Isabella up in her room? And she said, no, she's been down here with me the whole time. And I just said, oh, I thought I heard her up there. But now since some of the stuff's happened, I told her what I experienced. But at first, I didn't want to tell her because I didn't want to freak her out. Then there was another time that Kelsey and I were going on a date and we were meeting up next to the playground right up here. And I pull in next to her car, and I look over at her, and I could have sworn in the back seat I saw Isabella like go like this and look out the window at me and then sit back down behind Kelsey's seat. And so I get out of my car, lock the doors, get in the car with Kelsey, and we're driving down the road, and I'm talking to her, and then I start talking to Isabella. And I don't get a reply. So I look over my shoulder. There's nobody in the back seat. And I tell Kelsey, I thought Isabella was back there. And she said, no, she's at her grandma's. And I was like, I could have swore I saw her sitting back there. She's like, no. So, yeah. So then here the other night, just this week, Kelsey was home alone. I was at work because I work night shift at the local hospital. And Isabella was spending the night at her grandma's house. And Kelsey said she had woke up. And thought she heard something fall or a door slam or something down here in the living room or kitchen. And right after that, she heard a little girl's voice say, Mama. But mind you, Isabella's not home. She was home alone. So obviously she freaks out. 
And she said she just fought herself to go back to sleep, and she was scared. She locked all the bedroom doors and stuff upstairs. But then, just a few days ago, I was home in the morning getting Isabella ready for school. And as we're sitting on the bed and I'm brushing her hair, she's watching TV and not really paying attention to me. And I'm trying to brush her hair, and she wouldn't hold her head the right way. And I'm like, can you hold your head like this? And she wouldn't. So I went like this in front of her face to kind of get her attention from the TV and went, hello. And then as soon as I said that, I could have swore I heard a little girl's voice from downstairs say, hello. And Isabella even said to me, who did you say hello to? And there was another time separate from the little girl. That's all the ones for the little girl that we've had. Well, let me tell this first before I get into the next part. So this little girl, all this stuff's happening, seeing some stuff and everything. Kelsey told me before I moved in, and I asked her again about it the other day after all this stuff has been happening, to confirm it. Before I ever moved in here, there was a guy a couple doors up from her, an older man, who always swore up and down there was a little ghost girl in his apartment. And Kelsey said that you would even see him at night, and he told people he would. He would block his front door with furniture to keep the little girl from coming into his apartment at night, is how often he was seeing things and hearing things, I guess. And Kelsey said you would see him in his front window moving furniture in front of the door before he went to bed. So if there was anything in his apartment, maybe she goes from apartment to apartment, I don't know. But... I know if it's the same little girl that he's seen, I've seen and heard her, and now Kelsey has heard her a couple times. So, the last thing I was going to say, one of the experiences that we had back in, well, I had, well, Isabella and I had back in June. So, Kelsey and I had gone to the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, which is where we went the day I asked her to be my girlfriend, and we went back for our one-year anniversary. Well, we come home, and the very next morning... She had gotten up and left for work because she leaves a little earlier than why well, I work night shift. So she left before Isabella went to school and everything. So whenever I'm off the night before, I get her ready for school. So she had left. I heard the front door shut where she had gone out. And I'm laying there like half asleep. And it sounds like somebody's coming up the stairs. And then I hear a man's voice say, still doing house calls. Woke up because I thought someone was in the house, you know. And I sat there and I listened for a second. I thought, oh, I must have just been dreaming it. Didn't think much of it. Well, later that evening, Isabella comes into our room. And we're sitting there on the bed. And Kelsey was downstairs. And Isabella says to me, I was scared this morning after Mama left. And I said, why? And she said, it sounded like someone was coming up the stairs and they knocked on my door. It would have been the same exact time I heard somebody coming up the stairs and could have sworn I heard that man's voice. So, I don't know. My first thing was, oh my gosh, I hope nothing followed us home from that asylum. We haven't had anything else like that happen other than the little girl thing. But I think she was already here, if she is. But, I don't know. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think it's just the dreams are just my imagination do you think we're just hearing things do you think it's just coincidence corresponding with the guy across the street that had overdosed and then having that dream and then the little girl in the one man's apartment and now we're seeing and hearing a little girl i don't know let me know what you think um if you want to see any more videos like this make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you're getting all the notifications of when i post new things and like i said in the one video i'm going to try to start posting more I know, like I said, I'm getting married a week from today, so I don't know if I'll post any more this week after this one. But if I do, if you're subscribed, you'll know. But thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks. Bye.